What's up, party people? Casey here. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody is bearing up well in the current circumstances. Um, so welcome to another episode of Tedious and Inaccessible, um, the home quarantine edition. Uh, so this particular dish we're going to work on tonight uh, does not come from a request. It actually comes from a, a place of how much I love to make this dish. It's one of my favorites ever, ever, ever. Um, so ignore what I said before. This, this is the one. Uh, tell your friends. I don't know why I'm gesticulating like I'm in a boy band. But at any rate, so this is the one. I'm really excited to bring to you guys paella. Paella. One of my favorite dishes in the world. I've made, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 of these things. I usually make them two or three times a summer. Um, it's a little early to make one, but what the hell. Um, let's, let's, let's dive in. So um, let's see. I, I think what I wanted to do was really run through some special ingredient, ingredients and special equipment really quickly here. So right out of the gate, uh, I should mention, there are lots of different types of paellas out there and lots of different ways to make it. It's a Spanish dish. And depending on what region you're talking about, each of them has their own take on, on a paella. And there are loads of arguments about whether this ingredient belongs in or doesn't belong in based on where, what your history is and what your region is. I've read a lot about paellas because I love them that much, um, but I do not have a dog in this fight. So <laughs> I am not Spanish. I'm just a lover of the dish. So I'm just gonna go with what I like um, and, and stay out of the uh, historical brawl that is uh, paella in Spain. Um, I should mention too that um, I'm, I'm taking a little bit from some, some people that are much, much, much better than me at this. Uh, I want to reference uh, Chef Oscar Sebasis. Um, Chef Oscar, that's when he says his last name, it sounds nothing like my bad Spanish pronunciation. So Oscar, I'm very sorry about that. But this guy, this guy is an amazing chef and chef owner of a restaurant called Teleferic Barcelona. Um, there are two locations here in the Bay Area, and I think uh, at least a couple of locations in Spain. The guy is a master at paella. Um, so he's got some online stuff that, that I've actually stolen from because he's so amazing. Um, go check him out. I'll put a link to his restaurant, and if you're in any of the, those areas, do not miss the opportunity to go to Teleferic Barcelona in any of those areas. You, you will not regret it. A master of Spanish in modern cuisine. So thank you, Chef Oscar. Okay, so back to special equipment uh, and special ingredients. So as I mentioned, lots of different types of paellas. Um, the one we're gonna concentrate on tonight is called arroz negra, which is essentially a paella uh, with squid ink. So my guys are a little bit adventurous. They like some different flavors. They like squid ink, pasta, that sort of thing. So we're gonna jump into a squid ink paella so the first specialty ingredient is of course that squid ink. So I got this from an insider, a guy, he knows who he is, and I was able to score this. So this, this is also available online. You can search specialty stores or even Amazon to a certain degree. Um, you, can, you can also go to your fishmonger. If that sounds pr pretentious to you, you can go to your, your seafood counter at Safeway or uh, Kroger's and ask them if they can procure it for you. They, they've got the connections to do so there. But this can be a little tough to seek out. I got lucky and was able to score it from a great source. So you'll, you're gonna need some squidding for the old Eros Mega. Um, here we have, this is a piquillo pepper paste. Nothing too special there. You should be able to find that in a, in a great regular grocery store as well. They're just picky uh, peppers that I put through um, a blender and, and, and turn them into a paste. We're gonna use that a bit later. The rice is hugely, hugely, hugely important. They call it paella rice. It's actually bamba rice, which is a region. Um, that's You wanna make sure you get bamba rice. That's really huge. Again, Whole Foods, most grocery stores, you should be able to get your hands on it. A little more pricey, but well worth it. It's a, it's a great rice. Let me stop there and just say, this is a dish that celebrates the rice. I've got a lot of, a lot of other accoutrement and ingredients to kind of dress it up, make it pretty, give it great flavor. But that said, the star is, of this dish is the rice. You want to flavor that rice and build flavor and build flavor and layer flavor in. But at the end of the day, this is, this is what we're trying to highlight. Okay, uh, back to specialty ingredient list. So saffron, not, to, not the rarest ingredient in the world easy to find in any grocery store, but pretty expensive. Uh, the process of growing and collecting it is meticulous, so it's, it's pretty expensive, but that's, that's a key ingredient. 
fish stock, not that special, but again, one, one of the things you might have to kind of search for and say, hey, can we, can we get some fish stock in the store? And then this this is Lazy Man's aioli. This is, this is a, the mayonnaise with uh, garlic. You can make your own at home just as easily, but super convenient for me to just use that out of a bottle. All right, and then the last bit we have here is a special tool that we'll be using, and this is a paella pan. Uh, paella pans are great. You can get them pretty cheaply at like a Sur La Table, online, etc., etc. It's not wholly necessary that you have a paella pan. Uh, you could use a cast iron skillet just as well. But if you have one, the cool thing here is how, let me get that timer. The cool thing here is that it's so flexible with heat. It, it comes up with heat and cools down very quickly. So that's why I like using a paella pan. All right, it's mise en place time or prep time for this paella. Uh, we're gonna take tomatoes and break them down and red bell pepper and an onion and some garlic. We're gonna clean shrimp, chop calamari, and clean up our clams. And uh, that will be what we're doing for mise en place. I gotta tell you, I, I uh, have a buddy at work, Danny Shea. Danny, how you doing, buddy? Um, I keep thinking about trying to make a dish for him that he'd be really excited about. Um, and this one is all seafood and Danny is allergic to the concept of, of seafood, so this is not your dish, Danny, obviously. Don't worry, boyo. Uh, steak night's coming soon. Okay, so we want to take um, our tomato and cut it in half and get a box grater into a bowl. And real short and simple, I probably cut up that green part because I don't want to eat that. There we go. Uh, but essentially, you're going to take the tomato and grate it at that kind of medium grate against the box grater. And rub that down, but I'm not gonna go through the skin. I want the skins to be left over. We just want the flesh inside. And that is, we're gonna go through five or six of these medium vine ripened tomatoes and get them into the bowl. Okay, so we've gone through our five or six vine ripened tomatoes. They look like that against the box grater and that is ready to go for the sofrito later. Now we're gonna break down our red bell pepper here. I'm gonna cut off the top. And I'm gonna split it down the middle. My knife is not cutting very well. And I'm gonna run to the sink and rip out the seeds and the ribs real quick. All right. Probably do a little trim there on the ribs. All right. So then, I'm simply going to cut those into strips. Pretty thin strips, just so that I can turn them over and do a quick dice on them. All right, we'll finish that up. All right, so I made an executive decision here. Um, I only want to use half a red bell pepper. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this, but the, the Eddie with squid ink, it has flavor. It's got a real salinity, a real kind of like of the ocean flavor to it. And I want the rice to be the star and I want that flavor with the rice to be the, the star. So if I go, I, I might, to my mind, if I go full red pepper, it's gonna sort of over, it'd be a little overbearing. And I want all my flavors to kind of be in balance with, the, with that being the star. All right, so that's my explanation there. We are breaking down the onion, we peeled off the rough outer skin, we cut it in half, we left the root side intact, and now we're just gonna do a quick dice on this onion. So we're gonna put in some slits, right down through this half of onion, half of the onion. All right, many of you know this stuff, but for those of you who don't, and then we're gonna start to dice. And we can move pretty cleanly through that onion and pretty quickly. And then I'll come back through here and grab the back of my knife and do a finer dice on this and we'll get the whole medium yellow onion prepped and ready to go. So we got our onion processed here, pretty small dice on a medium yellow onion. Now we're gonna move into the garlic. Probably do one, two, maybe three fat cloves of garlic. And we're just gonna get an, another kind of real small dice on them. Nothing too complicated, just kind of just move through them at thin slices and then we'll come back around and chop them and move them around and we'll do the rest of those. All right, so we have the grated tomatoes, we have the onion, 
and we have the garlic over there and the pepper. So we'll get to those in a bit. All right, so let's talk about our shrimp. I, I got large, colossal, eh, not quite colossal, but large prawns. And we're just gonna dig in here and peel the shell off of these bad boys. And we'll leave the tail on, but I want I want the rest of the, of the uh, shell off. And I'm just gonna do, if you, if you watch the video for shrimp and grits, we cover in a little deeper detail the whole devaning process, but I'll do it again real quick. I do a slit underneath. This is the, I believe the neural vein. Um, my thanks to my friend Annalisa for helping me clarify that. And that one just pops right out on the side. There it is. So out that one goes. A lot of people skip that. I, I don't <laughs> because I have a fussy wife who does not like that stuff. And then the one on top, right? And that is actually the intestinal tract that you want to make sure that you, re you remove no matter what. So we do both in my house. Get rid of those gross things and we'll do the rest. Quick addendum on the shrimp. So we have them peeled, we have them deveined. I had my sous chef, Dylan, who kicks ass at this job. I'm gonna try a little trick here. I want the shrimp, ultimately, when I put them in the paella, I want them to remain straight and not do that tight little um, crunch that they do, that little ball they turn into. So I'm gonna put some slits. I'm gonna go on the back side here where it seems like the, the, the fiber is the tightest. And I'm gonna make some careful slits with my knife up and down this guy, pretty much almost halfway through. And the desire, again, is to be able to lay these guys out and have them get pretty flat. I'm gonna learn something about shrimp tonight uh, and figure out if my experiment is right or wrong. I kind of wonder if the slits need to take place on top as well, but that's my experiment. I, as you can see, I've, I've cut slits all through these. Let's see if I can um, put them in the paella and get my desired effect. And we're moving right into the calamari here. The squid heads. I don't mind a tentacle. I love a tentacle, but for the, the purposes of this paella, I just want the squid heads. So we're just gonna line up three or four of these guys and do a pretty, pretty uh, rough chop, right? Nothing dicey. We want to cut them into bigger sections. This guy may be a bit more. I want large tubes at the end of the day because they will shrink up as they heat through the paella. We'll finish it up. So let's clean up our clams. They've been um, hanging out in this bowl of cold water, cold salted, salted water. Um, what that does, they've been in there for about a half an hour. What that does is allow them to open up just a little bit and release some of the sand that they're, they're holding. So I'm just gonna put on my coldest water and grab these one at a time and give them a quick scrub on either side to release any sand. I think clams are so beautiful anyway, but we're gonna move through these and we'll be ready to actually get everything on the fire. All right, last step in prep uh, is the saffron. So saffron is, is really, really strong in flavor. So a little goes a long way. I'm a big fan of it. I, I love it in my paella. I've noticed for folks that, um, for, for paellas that I've tasted that had too much saffron, it's actually kind of, it turns the corner and gets a sort of weird soapy flavor to me, maybe, maybe just me. So again, I want to highlight the squid ink as the number one flavor, so I'm just not gonna go nuts on this. I'm gonna get probably just a pinch going. That's way, wow, that just is not what I have in mind. Uh, let's go with, say, probably that much is probably more than enough. And I'm just gonna grab it and throw it into a little pan here, just to toast it a little bit, just for a minute or two. And it starts to get aromatic, it's done. It, the, the heat helps it kind of release some of the oils within and, and get really aromatic. So I'm just gonna do that for two seconds and then we'll get started. So let's get into this. Let's get everything on the heat here. So this paella pan has been at a medium heat to medium low heat. I'm gonna punch it up a little bit here. And just um, in the background, we've got our stock that's been uh, heating up as well because we want to put hot stock in at some point. So we're just gonna put in some olive oil, a good four or five tablespoons. I'm gonna be mindful of my heat because I don't want to see a smoke point this early. It's way too early. We don't, well actually we don't want any smoke point at all from the olive oil, right? We want hot olive oil. It has a lower smoke point than say a canola or a vegetable oil. So we just want to be cautious of that. If you dump in your olive oil and see a bunch of smoke, your pan's way too hot. Stop where you are and start over. So I think we're in pretty good shape here. I'm gonna kick the heat up just a bit. Again, the pan's really responsive, but I'm just gonna let my oil get hot. I might even put a little bit more in because I don't think that's quite four or five. 
tablespoons. This really is the foundation, starting with the oil. We're flavoring it with everything we're about to put in, and everything we're about to put in is probably a good eight or so ingredients. So you can see how this is the foundation, and this is where we're gonna uh, take it and build it. All right, I've got some hot oil, some hot olive oil here. I think we're in good shape. We're gonna go ahead and put in our calamari. And we're looking really just to get it brown. I'm gonna settle it around so it's got a little bit of room. I'm gonna season just a little bit with some salt, a little bit of pepper. And we're just gonna give this a couple of minutes and then pour it out of the pan because it's been browned a bit. All right, so these guys have been in for a good four minutes or so, and I'm gonna move them around real quick. And then, I'm gonna take, this is our Bacada Verde. This is nothing uh, more exciting than some olive oil, some parsley, and some garlic blended together. But it will begin to layer in some of our flavors with the calamari. All right, give it another minute or two, and we'll get these guys out of the pan and move on to the next flavor. All right, our calamari is done. Sort of pre-cooked and browned a little bit in some places. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out of the paella pan. Pull a lot of green name in the background, nothing wrong with that. All right. Squid heads out. And we're gonna launch right into our onions. Get them in the pan. Move those around for a couple minutes. All right, we'll let these guys go for two to three to four minutes. Let them get translucent. We'll get some garlic in and move on to the next step. Come on in. So our onions are nearly completely translucent. So now it's time for garlic to come into the scene, take the stage a little bit. So I like to clear a little path in the center. And grab my, in this case, three cloves of garlic and get it right in the middle. If it goes in earlier, there's a danger of it burning. So that's why we kind of wait for the end of the onion cycle, make sure they're covered in oil. Get those going and we'll move on to the next part. Garlic has been incorporated into the onion oil mixture. Let's add red peppers to the party. This is the sofrito that we're building here. And let's start to move those around a little bit. Again, a new and exciting flavor to be added to the mix. That'll build the overall foundation. We'll be right back. So this has been going for about four minutes now, and it looks very pretty in there. Well incorporated, and it smells like a million bucks, Dylan. Does it smell good? Does it smell good, Dylan? Yeah, it does. All right, there we go. So let's add our, our uh, tomato flesh puree to the party and let that get incorporated. This is the tricky part, not the tricky part, but just something to pay attention to. So again, we're building a sofrito based on fla flavor on top of flavor. I wanna get this tomato flesh moved around and give it enough time, probably a good four, I'm sorry, probably five or six minutes to get under the heat because what I wanna see happen is the tomato get incorporated obviously, but also turn a little bit on the side of brown and get a little bit pasty. So we'll look for that in a minute. Come on in. So this is a good sign. It's looking good. Don't be fooled by the bright red you see. The bright red are those red bell peppers. The flesh of the tomatoes and the onions and garlic have come together really well and have actually turned, if you look closely, more of a brown color and things are starting to get a little bit pasty. Perfect, perfect, perfect place. And now we're gonna add in a sweet pimenton, which is, I just went French for that, I didn't mean it, uh, pimenton, which is, um, essentially a sweet version, probably doing like a pretty heavy tablespoon here. Normally I would do uh, two tablespoons in this kind of recipe, but I think a, a tablespoon will do because I don't want it to take over the flavor. Um, but that is a uh, sweet pimenton. And then and there are different varieties of pimenton. You've got hot and smoky, etc. And I'm gonna go ahead and finger in 
our saffron, our toasted saffron, and then quickly get things moving around in that hot fat. So the color is gonna get dramatically darker and flavors are gonna come together pretty dramatically as well. See you in a minute on the next step. We are in such an amazing place with a lot of uh, flavors that have been concent concentrated together. And now we're gonna do the uh, amazing part of the putting rice into the dish. Here we go. This is about two and a half, close to three cups. And we're gonna get it into the pan. And we're gonna get it moved around. We're gonna give it a full two or three minutes here to get it incorporated and a little bit toasted. All right, so check it out. We're, we've been moving this rice around, making sure it doesn't get too scorched on the bottom or not scorched at all, obviously. Um, we're just moving this around. And so the rice has been going for a good couple, three minutes and it is toasted and we want to kind of lose its, its uh, white color, which we've accomplished. So the rice is in a good spot. So guess what? It's time to turn this rice from a standard paella into a negative paella. So I'm gonna grab a couple of spoonfuls of stock and get it into the mix. This is nice hot stock, uh, mostly fish stock with a little bit of chicken, probably a five to one ratio. And all I'm looking to do is create enough liquid mass to get my squid ink in. Because I want my squid ink to come in and be incorporated evenly. I don't want it to be dumped on dried rice and wind up in a spot where um, it's clumpy, right? It's not clumpy. So I want a little bit, quite a bit. There we go. That's a decent looking pool. Maybe just another scoop more. The ratio is essentially two to one rice to stock. There, that looks good. That looks good. So that gives me an opportunity to open up my squid packets. I'm gonna open up two of these, which is gonna be roughly the equivalent of two teaspoons and is really going to change the character and flavor of this paella immediately. I've got something stuck in my finger here, so let me see if I can use a tool to get it off and actually get it where it belongs in the paella. Perfect. And then my other packet. It's surprising how little you need to really influence the flavor and the color of this paella and this rice. So, I'm getting it on my fingers here. Oh my gosh, it tastes so good though. So I'm gonna immediately start to move this around. Look at that, everything changes. Immediately influence the whole dish. Just two teaspoons. So we'll keep moving this around and getting everything incorporated. And then we'll have the rest of our sock. Okay, check it out. We've got all that squid ink <laughs> on my hands <laughs> and in the dish. Uh, and now it's time to finish up our stock. Again, predominantly fish stock with a little bit of chicken stock, but this should cover us for the entire dish. And once all that liquid gets incorporated, we're gonna do just a quick stir and then we're gonna finally leave this rice alone to just absorb all of that squid ink and all of that flavor. And then uh, we'll monitor the progression there and add our seafood in next. Okay, so the rice is going. Check out this sort of uh, black squid ink oil slick that's happening here. Uh, pro tip, I'm gonna take my piquillo pepper mix and do kind of, not kind of, two hefty spoonfuls. Oh, let's make it three and move that around and see how that influences the flavor as well. And we'll be back. All right, so let's start to add back some of our protein in. We're probably about 10 minutes out from this thing being done. I'll mind the heat, make sure that the bottom doesn't get burnt. So our squid is going in. And I'm gonna tuck those in as we go. And we'll be back to do some more. All right, so we have our calamari in. That's gonna go for four or five minutes here. Um, I noticed we haven't added any salt yet. And I just had a quick taste and it's a, it's definitely in need of some salt. So I'm gonna kind of move that around before I add in. There we go. 
before I add in our clams. So I'm just adjusting the seasoning as we go along here. That looks pretty good. The calamari is cooking nicely. And let's go ahead and get our other seafood in here. Maybe six or so clams in the mix. There we go. There, I like that. That looks good. And then we'll finish up with our prawns and we'll be nearly finished. Everything's buried, the seafood's buried. It's time to get our shrimp in there as well. And hope that they don't curl up on us because that was the plan. We'll create a little sundial and jam them right in that rice. And by the way, the rice is still plenty al dente, al dente, as the Italians say. So I'm not above, what is that, one, two, four, five. Five's good, let's, let's roll with five. I am absolutely not above pouring in a little hot stock to help the cooking process on top. And additionally, the rice could use a little more time and that kind of helps us also protect the bottom of the dish from burning. So this is a good place we're in right now. All right, things have gone really well. Um, come on in, Dylan. You can see that my cuts and the shrimp worked really well. They are able to remain straight. All the Most of the liquid has been absorbed. All of the clams have opened up. So we are in a great spot. These handles are in good shape. I'm going to come over here and get it on a little plate. And then, is this the right tail bean? I forget which one. Yeah, I think so. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna plant some tomatoes real quick. So all we have to do with this paella is really kind of garnish the top without going too crazy. That's restraint's tough for me, but um, let's just um, garnish in a way that makes sense. So I've got some tomatoes that I want to get in the mix that I want to sort of steam under the towel because the paella needs to rest for a good two or three minutes and we're about to let that happen but I would like the idea of these tomatoes just getting softened a little bit again this is pretty much about garnishing I mean yes it's great to get a nice bite of um, tomato in in your bite these are grape tomatoes that I am using and I just want them to steam a little bit under the towel. Everything else we're gonna finish up in just a second, but let's cover this thing and let it rest for a good three minutes. And we're gonna finish up with some garnishing and we'll be done. All right, let's see what we got. Look at this, it's beautiful. All right, so all we're doing is garnishing the dish at this point. So what do we need to do? All right, I cheated a little bit. Um, a straight steal, a lift from Chef Oscar in his restaurant. His are probably better than mine, but I went to the trouble to dehydrate some citrus. I have a blood orange uh, citrus uh, here that I'm going to sit right in the middle of this guy. And then I uh, did the same thing with some lemons. All I did was run them through a 1 8 inch um, um, cutter, <laughs> sorry. And um, then I put them in an oven for about two and a half hours at 200 degrees with just a sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle of salt. Um, they come out as chips and they're citrusy and they are delicious and they add a little bit of flavor. So let me figure out my garnishing here. So I've got the blood orange here. I'll probably just kind of stand these up around the horn a little bit. This is, you know, my best attempt at being a little bit artistic. Again, they do taste like a million bucks. And honestly, not that I intended it, but they do complement the flavor of the seafood and the salinity in um, the squidding, which is pretty cool, which is pretty darn cool. All right, so I've got those guys going, they're standing up, that's looking kind of cool. Um, then I've got a number of Meyer lemon chunks um, chopped up and ready to go because I definitely believe that this paella will benefit hugely from a squeeze of lemon throughout. Looks like we need like one more. Let me grab my knife. Just one more. Um, I think that'll do it, right? So there's some lemon. And so this is a pretty, this is a pretty nice palette. Again, the tomatoes have softened a bit. 
we've got lemons, we've got dehydrated uh, fruit as well. So I think the only thing we really need is just, you know, an easy hand on some green. And this is just some parsley, which I do love in dishes. It tends to brighten things up quite a bit. All right, pause. One more thing I forgot, and that is the aioli, and that's the garlic mayonnaise. I think if we just put a couple of um, healthy drabs of this throughout, the color is gonna be pretty dramatic, right? And also the taste, more importantly than the color, is gonna be pretty wonderful. It's less than perfect, it's not wildly symmetrical, but I am going to get it in the dish and hope that that looks like something that's kind of appealing. So, ow, that's hot underneath. Hey, sorry. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I give you arroz negra or paella with squid ink. Um, hopefully, it ta hopefully it tastes like a million bucks. We're going to get it on some plates and feed some hungry people at this point. But again, huge shout out to um, Chef Oscar. I stole a number of his ideas, uh, a guy, an international chef of uh, acclaim way beyond my skill set. Um, but I, uh, I hope he likes it too, chef, I hope you like it. And uh, that's all, ladies and gentlemen. If you like what you've seen, please do the subscribe and notifications thing. And I hope you give this one a shot because it's crazy, crazy tasty. Thanks a lot.